Yeah. 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 At the moment, as you see the configuration, it's configured for us to fly to an incident. Because what will happen, as you've already witnessed, is our phone rings. Um, they send us to an incident. We take the details down, like the location, uh, grid reference, um, and some details about the incident. Um, and whilst that's happening, generally the pilot's coming out to the helicopter to start up and do some pre-flight checks. Um, it's not like jumping in a car, not that you should ever jump in the car and start driving, you should always check that your car's safe to do so as well. But uh, you know, in, in terms of any form of aircraft, whether it's a fixed wing or rotary, there are some mandatory checks that you have to go through as you would expect. And the pilot will do that as we're collecting all the details of the incident um, and then um, it's obvious where the pilot sits the pilot sits where all the main controls are and then one paramedic will sit in the left hand front seat and one paramedic sits in the rear facing um, rear seat and it's that paramedic that is in charge of um, the patient in terms of um, medical care and decision making um, and the front seat paramedic is the one that assists the pilot for flying duties, particularly things like navigation, but also looking out for hazards as we're coming into land. Um, and then once the flying duties are finished for that paramedic, they become the assistant of the other paramedic and assist with whatever's needed there. Um, and then we will um, treat the patient um, and then we need to move the patient onto a stretcher and then bring the patient to the helicopter. And just before that happens, the pilot will reconfigure the uh, aircraft. Like that, so we'll put the seat the other way around. Because once we've landed, we will obviously take our bags to the patient. So all of this on top of here goes to the patient. This is our defibrillator. This is our monitor. All of this blue bag is for protecting our patient's airway. And then everything in the red bag is everything else. Which includes? Uh, mostly around circulation, uh, looking after the patient's circulation. So it's got, you know, uh, drugs and needles, um, and um, dressings and tourniquets and that sort of thing. Um, so all of these things will be removed um, and take, be taken to scene. Uh, and that will then free the stretcher up for the patient. What do these wet bags weigh roughly? Well, you tell me. <laughs> Thank you, Dave. more. That's 17 kilos. Okay. Yeah. Uh, that one's about 14 kilos. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, which is fine when you're lifting it in and out, but when you're running yeah, yeah. half a mile <coughs> up a hill, it's hard going. So, this stretcher here can actually be removed and could be used for the patient themselves. And the patient can be sat in a semi-sitting position if necessary. Um, however, we don't always use this stretcher. We've got another stretcher which I'll show you in the back. I know, it doesn't look like there's enough room, but there is. Uh, and then we would bring the patient and place them on top of this stretcher on our other stretcher. And then they get strapped in with all these seat belts. Do you have like um, um, a weight? A certain weight you can go over to say if the person, if the patient is really large. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's a good question yeah. because, well, as we know, you know yeah. the population is getting larger, and that is, is a bit of a problem for us. So uh, this is a um, uh, so what's the maximum load weight of this? Is so the back up eighty kilos is our maximum for a sitting up position. Well, that's me out of the 
question then, isn't it? Because I'm over 80 kilos. Um, but it will um, it will hold the weight of a patient much heavier than that. Um, but you're limited by things like you know the stretcher straps. That is at maximum. So if anybody's bigger than that, then we can't take them. Oh, you don't have an extension. <laughs> So, you know, so we can't fly with them unstrapped. No. Um, so, and you, you know, like on an airplane, you get little extensions. Don't they put those in anywhere? <laughs> no. No, no, no. Um, so, if helicopter, no, we're going to allow, give you any extra capability on that. So it will get, yes, it will carry, um, enable us to lift with more weight. <laughs> so the other limitation you need to be aware of, if someone's bigger than that, then they're going to be, be much longer. heavier as well. Yeah. And weight is, a, is an issue. So... With our fuel in, as we've got it, if, let's say one of you collapsed now and was seriously unwell, for us to load you into a helicopter and to fly to hospital, you'd have to be under 80 kilos. Because if you were more than that, we wouldn't take off. Really? That's how narrow the margins are. That's However, totally if we out. took off and flew around for five minutes, uh -huh. then we could take someone who's about 95 kilos. Oh, fine. Because obviously, the more you fly, the more you burn fuel. Yeah, yeah. 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 And the more you burn back. fuel, the lighter the yeah, aircraft yeah. becomes. Did you ever have to say to somebody, "Sorry, we can't take you on"? So, uh, um, yeah, yeah. Seriously. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because of their weight and size. Yeah. And so, you know, so there are a number of reasons why we won't fly a patient. Um, safety is a really important thing and so you know uh, we do attend to people that have harmed themselves for example um, and we will do our best for them but you know if someone's done that they may not be of the right uh, yeah. Um, yeah. frame of mind to fly Sit safely in, there, in, a, yeah. in a helicopter so that might limit us um, equally actually if we've landed we're only 10 minutes from the hospital by road ambulance mm. Then actually, there's no benefit in us loading into the helicopter, taking off, flying for about a minute, and landing at the at the hospital, because actually there's no time benefit there. So there's a lot of uh, things that we need to take into consideration in terms of you know where we might bring some benefit. Um, but half the point is that you've got all the medical things, so you go out there, you can probably stabilise them for the, the land ones come along. And exactly. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. So there's a lot. So we don't just work with one, 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 uh, one um, sort of system. There's there's lots of op uh, there's lots of ways that we can work, um, and we have to treat every instance um, uh, on its own merits because the patient will be different every time and the location will be different every time. Uh, and so once the patient's loaded on the stretcher, we just put them back in. And they get a view of the ceiling. <laughs> <laughs> and that's their view. With some headphones. With some headphones. The headphones are, are, are noise cancelling headphones. It's not because we play them music. No, no. Although actually, <laughs> it's not an unreasonable thing for us to think about because perhaps that might help some people. Yeah. But actually, a lot of our patients are so poorly that they won't be interested in anything other than the fact that without headphones, it becomes incredibly noisy and therefore may be more frightening for people. There's no soundproofing in this. Nothing at all. I always thought there might have been. Well, you, in the, in the, probably in the VIP helicopters, you may, well be, you may be used to. With, 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 with carpet and champagne, yes, they do. They do soundproof them. So the Royal Flight. So the Royal Flight, for example, has a, has a large helicopter with a significant amount of soundproofing on board and they don't have to wear headphones for example um, but uh, of course you know all those things come with with um, oh, with costs you know <laughs> in terms of financial cost weight cost um, you know reduction in inside um, capacity uh, you know so no, I mean, it's all about decision that. making what, yeah. what what are the things that are, we need and what are things <laughs> we'd like to have and what are things we, we really need and what are things we can do without. So if you want to move around to the back of the helicopter I can show you the back as well. As the pilot,
Tyler, do you um, you don't do any medical treatment at the a scene of an accident? You would help carry things, or you stay with the aircraft? The pilot. Uh, so I'm not a pilot. So I'm oh, a paramedic. I'm but sorry. but. No, it's okay, it's alright. I've been called Wes. Um, <laughs> the, the, the pilot stays at the aircraft, and the, but the pilot will assist us with non-technical, non-medical things. So yeah, they will bring us equipment, they will hold equipment, but they'll do it entirely under our direction. They don't do anything clinical at all. Can they be trained though to do that if they so wanted? Could no. you not? You couldn't do that. Like being a absolutely, absolutely. So we got our roles and responsibilities. Like double up, and so you've got everything on. So board. we can <coughs> we can train them to do some um, basic tasks, which would be incredibly helpful to us at the same. Yeah, an extra yeah. pair of hands, and actually some of those things are really really helpful, but nothing technical because that wouldn't be appropriate. Yeah. They're not clinically qualified. They're not medically qualified. No, but qualified. if they were, I mean, could you not go out and get your helicopter's pilot license? <laughs> Well, I could, but there's, there's there's no chance I would be able to uh, fly the number of hours that would be needed in order to right, become a Hems right, pilot. Right. So yes, I could fly as a private. No, but even for Devonair Ambulance, if you like doubled up, does that make too, sense? Too much. So we don't double time. No, 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 no. There's no way that that would. No, be I, that's how yeah. I thought it worked. No. There's a team yeah. of seven pilots, is it, in the in Devonair Ambulance? I'm on the, yeah. I thought that's seven. Worked. So we need three pilots a day because there's three shifts a day. I'm like that. Yeah. How many flowering hours a year does a pilot have to put in? Do we know? Wasn't that? I'm not sure. Because exactly. they have to keep a logbook and things, don't they? So this is our other um, stretcher I mentioned to you, uh, underneath there. Um, and in fact, the stretcher that you saw earlier that I slid in and out, that can actually come this way as well. So I can slide it in and out this way as an option. We don't. We don't. We don't use this as an option very often yeah. but um it gives just, you headspace yeah absolutely yeah, yeah. Do you remember Mash? oh yeah i got the box set of that <laughs> don't tell me about that one <laughs> <laughs> patient hanging on the side of a helicopter can i can i take a photo of that before you close it absolutely yeah. So our next helicopter, the one that's just been ordered, will look like this, but it's a but it's bigger version. So this is a this is a one this is what's called a, a one three five, an EC one three five, and then and the next one's a one four five. So it will actually be the next size up. And actually, it doesn't look that much bigger from the outside, really. But when you're inside, it's a bit like a TARDIS. It's quite a bit bigger. I got them. Yeah. 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 So the pedals are in charge of that. They are, yeah. And that is in charge of that. Yeah, because I, I wanted to be, I wanted to go into that. But I was told if I could do this, I was on my way to being a pilot. <laughs> So I, I, can't, I can't do that. I used to do that all the time. <laughs> when I was a kid, it was like, look, I could be a pilot. <laughs> if only I could, and I could have been a pilot. Yeah. I was just going to have to go on my.